What did you find? A fish. Look down. <laughs> Look down. Should Pat cast over there? I found something. Yeah. Here we are. We're back. Big water fish, and you know that. But what you maybe haven't seen, even though he's been lurking in the background, my buddy Pat, aka Flathead. We're doing. We're, yeah, we're doing a little twofer. But we're going to start off, Pat, with a three-year-old. Uh, he's going to have a fun time where we're going today. He is going to lose his mind. Look at people know where we are going. Oh, we're going to the Castelia Fish Hatchery. Uh, I got drawn uh, for the lottery. It's going to be your brother-in-law, uh, myself, and you, and then his son. Hey, there he is. I found you, Oswald. What'd you find? I found you. You found me? Yeah. Well, you know what you have to find next? What? To fish. Oh. Sorry, Aquas. Yeah, there's fish out there. Is that fish? That's fish. What are you, what, what is happening right now? Oh my, what, what are you, what's going on? Maybe try to put, put this hand right up here. Maybe a little leverage. Does a three-year-old know what leverage is? Keep them up, Bubba. Okay, oh. give us a little rundown on how you actually get to this lottery pick that we ended up here with. Sure, we uh, we have a lottery that you can apply for during the month of March. Uh, it's a three dollar application you can put yourself in. Um, a lot of people put their kids in. There's actually a separate drawing in the summer for kids. Um, but basically, we fill spots from May all the way through the end of November that a group gets to go back and fish every day. During the kids' season, from mid-June to mid-August, there's two groups a day, one in the morning and one in the afternoon. So you can bring yourself as the permit holder, two other adults and three children with you. And it's kind of a, a lot of times it's a little family type deal. You guys got the place to yourself back there. There's about a half mile stretch of stream, lots of fish and everybody can keep catch and keep by fish. How many fish have you got? Three. Okay, we're gonna really slow now. Really slow. Oh boy, he's walking. He's walking. Keep going, buddy. Don't let go. You gotta keep on the game. Keep reeling. Oh my gosh, oh. Nash, you just got a monster. Biggest fish ever. ever. Will you pet this one? Nice fishy pow. Nice fishy pow. You want to give him a kiss on the head? Good job. So wait a minute, Nash. You nice fishy pow. Nash, you're gonna give him a smooch, but you won't. You won't give him a little hold. Your mom said she wanted to see you hold one. What I did is if you go in and you look at, at the run um, and you'll see like in the main run, um, you'll have a lot of smaller fish in that run. So like the biggest problem is, is trying to get your bait down to the fish. So you have to isolate a fish closer to the bank um, and then try to make a play on it. But you read the fish's language. If it's swimming around and it's just not locked in a place, it's probably a catchable fish if you can get a bait to it. I'm gonna make a play at this fish. He's isolated. 
I'm trying to get it drawn and slip all it. See, like, if I go and I catch one of those little fish, then I got to take it towards my limit. So it's kind of frustrating. So you try to get the fish closer and not in that pool because as you see, the fish are coming from all directions, even from upstream going down it just because they're pellet fed and everything, everything that they have, their food, like anything that hits the water, they associate with food. But when they're sitting in a lie and they're throwing pellets out, they're actually watching their meal come through the air. And by the time it hits the water, they're already waiting on it. So you sit and you wait a minute and try to let this situation calm down. But I mean, you got four hours at this to catch five fish and uh, you have time. So it's just a matter of being patient. Oh. Yeah, Pat finally got one. Oh my gosh, Pat. It was fingers in I know. It's gonna take him a minute. You know, it's really hard to double when you're fishing with Pat, even when you're fishing in a barrel. Pretty crazy here. It's a great thing that the state does with this draw deal. Definitely encourage you guys, even though it leastens our chance of getting in to go do that. And one thing that we've been doing, there's, it's hard to see in the water probably with the camera, but there are literally thousands of fish here. And a lot of what we're trying to do is just stay away from some of the smaller fish and catch a little bit better ones like that. And cause there's a lot of fish probably in that 10, 12 inch range. And so, we're basically using some big plastics and just trying to pull them away. I mean, you're literally pulling them away, kind of like if you're pan fishing. So, but definitely some nicer fish to be had in here if you do things a little different. If you guys do draw this here or fish a similar situation, one thing I might recommend is little rubber boots or sandals or something, because you're always going to have grass and generally wet and cut grass. But the other thing would be is, you know, some oversized plastic, probably almost small walleye stuff, really, really big pan fish stuff, just because you're trying to stay away from some of those smaller fish. And so, especially if you don't want this to kind of go too quickly because this is not a catch and release deal. Then the other opposite in the spectrum, like Pat there, he caught some good ones on just a really tiny jig head and a piece of crawler. So when you can get those fish and there's not a bunch of them and they're kind of isolated, that's probably the best way to actually trigger them because you're kind of just ticking them off with something oh, like that's this. Pretty cool. that's <laughs> enough, uh, I mean. Yeah. So notice the white on it, that's the one that lost, lost. <laughs> so we gotta hide this fish because Ross would do this to me. So maybe we put the fish over by those guys and just play dumb and just let Ross go in and just try to figure out where it's at, you know? But it's in my hand. Couldn't happen with better guy. <laughs> oh, Ross is gonna be so salty. <laughs> Is that the good one, Ross? Over here? I, I landed one about like this. I broke one. Over there. Oh. Yeah. Where are we going? I, I kept this one because it was really unique. I had this, uh, I had this white spot on its head. <laughs> <laughs> Did you get my jig back? No! We isolated it. And we stunned. Look at that. got on it. <laughs> That's the biggest one. That's a good one. Oh boy, eating big jigs. So here, here's what you do. You showed me some of these jigs last night and I'm like, man, that thing's way too big. Well, you need things that are big just so the others like panfish. Yes. It's like bluegills. Yeah. Holy spicoli. Calm down, Timmy. Holy sp I'm going to need assistance here. That. Jeez. So this one, serious deal, like obviously we're fishing in a barrel, but yet to catch those better ones, like this is the theme, right? 
we walked up, we didn't have our shadow into the water. That seemed to make a big yes. difference. This was one fish that was inside in just like this much water. And he, I threw it in front of him because this, again, there's still a little stream here. Came right down, he hit it immediately, just smoke fest. That's our best one. This, this fish is isolated from other brown. It's, it's actually the only third brown that I've seen uh, today in the run. But like, you can obviously see the colors on it. Um, Show them. Show them. Yeah. Show them people. Kind of, kind of muddy now. Um, there's, there's another one that will probably. So, what is this? We, we switched it up here a little bit, didn't we? Um, it's, it's same... I just caught that big one on a big jig, and you were doing something a little different, right? Yeah, I'm just using a jig and a worm. Um, little piece. Little piece, yeah. Just half a worm on a 30 second ounce jig. Um, and when I hooked that fish, the other brown, I mean, they were right together, right there. But, like, they both came at came at the presentation at the same time and he just happened to hit it but um how often you catch brown trout in, in ohio it's funny because like the way the the fish grows a lot of these are, like when you get a larger brown in here it's like the the gill doesn't go and cover like the gill plate doesn't cover the gill and you'll see on some of the bigger ones you'll actually see slight red um i don't know it's just because they feed them and they grow so fast i'm not sure so one thing to keep in mind, especially if you got the kids here, really anybody, is good sunglasses, polarized ones. Two reasons. Not taking a hook to the face, because you're kind of sight fishing these things, they're biting at it, but really not biting at it a lot of them when you're using some of the bigger baits like we are. Uh, but you can AC in the water, but maybe not take a hook to the eye, which is always a good thing too. So a little bit of safety and also a little bit of function, because we can definitely see these fish, and me and Pat are trying to kind of pick out the little bit better ones, and we're pulling those fish away that are the lures away from the smaller ones. Concluding our day with a limit catch at Castalia Fish Hatchery. Pat drew a permit here, which is amazing. Nash was catching a lot of fish, but he is thoroughly done with this whole procedure. Once he's done catching, he's over, which is understandable. But um, it's kind of like dealing with me, right? Uh, I think you can handle it better. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> so <laughs> anything you can think of to pass on quickly, you know, bring a landing net, maybe bring some waterproof shoes. You got lots of grass and wet stuff like that small jigs but also some big jigs because that's yes. how we could keep fishing if you want to keep fishing more than a little bit because these things will bite quickly yeah. basically some bigger plastics that allowed us to kind of pull away from these fish and that's how we caught some of the better ones here you know probably a 25 inch or pat got a nice big brown so lots of different things here but if you go on the ohio dnr site they can give you a lot of information too about the castello fish draw and how that lottery pick works